Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking through the answers to the review for Unit 3, Topic 2, Progress Check that's coming up uh, later this week. So I hope uh, that you find this helpful. So let's get started. All right, we'll start off with an easy one. Uh, in this problem, we just have to find the measure of angle HJK. Now, make sure you understand what that notation means. That's not angle H. You have to follow H, J, K. It's the middle letter that really defines where the angle is. So we are looking for this angle. And of course we know that we're dealing with a triangle here. So we know that the sum of the interior angles of this triangle have to add up to 180. So we're going to set up that equation. So I'm going to say that we have 90 plus 55 plus our angle that we don't know. And that has to equal 180. Um, so let's add these together. That's going to give me 145 plus angle H J K equals 180. And then we'll subtract 145 from both sides. And that's going to give us a final answer of 35 degrees. A shortcut would be to know that since uh, this angle is 90, these two have to add up to 90. And you can maybe see easily that 55 and 35 is equal to 90. Alright, so let's put that in the official. Whoops, that's wrong. Let's try that again. Let's erase that. So this final answer is 35 degrees. Alright, let's take a look at the next one number two. All right, so we have a few angles that we uh, need to figure out, and I'm going to just find all the unknown answer uh, angles in this picture first, and then we can match them to the angles we're looking for. So remember we have different relationships that are going to connect known angles to unknown angles, which are these three that are coming around it. And two of the relationships that we're going to use here are supplementary angles because we know when two angles form a straight line that they add up to 180. We also have a vertical angle situation here and we know that vertical angles are congruent. So I know that this angle here is going to be the same as its vertical angle so that's going to be 112. I know that these two angles are supplementary, so they're going to add up to 180. So this angle is going to be 68. And this angle is vertical with this angle, so this angle will also be 68. All right, so let's match these numbers with the angles they're looking for. Let's see, we have A, C, E. Okay, so that's 112 for this one. 112 degrees. Then we have E, C, D. So that's this angle. That's going to be 68 degrees. And then finally, we have A, C, B. Okay, and that matches with 68 degrees as well. All right, so again, the key is connecting known angles with unknown angles using our relationships. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. All right, so we have a triangle here. It's isosceles. We have a lot going on here. Um, what angles are we looking for? Well, let's, let's just get the other angles in the triangle. So the key to this problem is it's isosceles because we have two equal sides. And the one key point of this is that in an isosceles triangle, 
these base angles are also going to be the same. So I know that 40 plus this plus this is 180, but these two are going to be the same angles. So I know that they have to add up to 140, right? Because 180, 180 minus 40 equals 140. That's what I have for these two angles together, but because they're the same, I can divide this in half to get each angle. So that means that each of these angles are going to be 70. And does that work out? 70 plus 70 is 140. 140 plus 40 is 180. So let's match up with the angles that we're looking for here. First, I want SVT, SVT, that's this angle here, that's going to be 70 degrees, and then, of course, the other angle, VST, is also 70 degrees. So remember, the key here is that an isosceles triangle has two equal sides and two equal angles. I'm going to write that just because I think it's important. Isosceles, I think I'm spelling that right. Isosceles triangles have two equal sides and two equal angles that kind of go with those sides. All right, moving on to the next problem. All right, so here we have a little bit of algebra going on and uh, using angle relationships. So let's take a look at number four first. So I have a known angle and an unknown angle that's represented by an expression. But we're going to use the relationship of vertical angles, and we know that these two are going to be equal. So let's write that expression. We're going to have 3x minus 5 equals 123. So we can either distribute the 3, or we can divide both sides by 3. I think I'm going to distribute this. So multiply the 3 times everything in the parentheses, that's going to give me 3x minus 15 equals 123. And this is a two-step equation that we've spent a lot of time on. Remember, uh, the way that I've shown you how to do it is I circle the variable and the number, and that means that's what I do last. So that means I'm going to add 15 to both sides. leaves me with 3x on this side. 123 plus 15 sounds like 138. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And I wonder what that gives us. Let's see, 3 into 138. 3 times uh, 4 is 12, with a remainder of 1. And 3 times 6 is 18. So I know I did that in my head. You could use a calculator to do that as well. So the problem asks what x is. So x is 46. All right, let's take a look at number 5. We have a couple of things going on here. We have an angle we're trying to find, and we're having uh, a variable we're trying to find. So here is our known angle. We're going to uh, connect that to an unknown angle that has an expression of 4y plus 8. So these two angles form a straight line, which means they have to add up to 180. So let's write that equation. We're going to have 36 plus 4 times y plus 8. We know those two numbers add up to 180. All right, let's do a little bit of simplifying here. 36, I'm going to distribute the 4. 
I'm going to multiply it by everything. I can combine my two numbers. So that's going to give me 4y plus 64 equals 180. That's a two-step equation. If I circle this, it means I do that last. So I'm going to subtract 64. That's going to give me 4 y is equal to 16 and then my last step is to divide by 4 and that's going to give me y equals 4. Alright so I got that piece done and then uh, once I know what angle k is I could uh, do a couple of things here right. I could figure out what this angle is by plugging y back in or k is supplementary to the 36, so I know that k plus 36 is equal to 180. Um, I think that might be the simplest one, right? 36 plus k is equal to 180. So that tells me that that angle is going to be 144. All right. Again, we are using relationships to find connections between known angles and unknown angles. Known angles and unknown. Um, here we use supplementary. Here we used vertical angles. You could use complementary or it can use the fact that triangles, uh, interangles add up to 180. All right, what's next? Aha, uh -huh. all right. So don't be tricked by these questions. Um, you should really ignore the pictures because uh, they all look like triangles, but if you look at the side lengths, you will find that some of them do not actually create valid triangles. So these are not drawn to scale. Ignore the pictures. Just look at the side lengths. We have a rule for that. And remember, the rule is that the two smaller angles have to add up to be something greater than the larger angle. Okay, so that's what I'm, I'm going to write that up here. The two smaller angles let's say have to have a sum greater than the largest angle. All right, so let's take a look at these. So on this first one, our two smaller angles are 3 and 10. They add up to 13. 13 is not greater than 15, so this is not a valid triangle. Um, on the next one, our two smaller angles are 3 and 10 again. And their sum is 13, which is equal to 13, but they have to be greater than. So this is also not valid. All right, on this one, our two smallest angles are 3 and 10 again. They add up to 13. That is greater than 11. So that's a good one. On this one, our two smaller angles are 3 and 9 this time. 3 and 9 is 12. 12 is greater than 10. I'm going to write that down too. Okay, so I'm going to write here uh, 13 greater than 11. Here I'm going to write 12 greater than 10 and circle that to let you know that that's a valid one. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Um, our two small angles are 3 and 7. They add up to be 10. Our third largest side is 10. They, have, they can't be equal. It has to be greater. So this is not a good one. And then here we have 3 and 3 are our two smaller angles. They add up to 6. 6 is also not greater than 10. So this one does not work either. All right, so um, we only had two valid triangles uh, in this group.
All right, let's take a look at uh, the next page. All right, this one's a little tricky for me to do on here, but um, I'm going to give it a shot. We have to uh, draw an isosceles triangle with one angle that is 40. So I'm going to start by uh, drawing a line. And let's see, let's put it over here. And I'd like that line to be a little thicker. Okay. And then I'm going to measure from this angle a 40 degree angle. So I'm going to take the compass and put it on that end point. I need to rotate a little bit. I need to line up the bottom of that compass with my line. It's hard to do this on here a little bit. Uh, I could do even a little better, I think. Let's see. That's pretty good. So I'm going to mark off where the 40 degree angle is. Okay, so that's you know around here. And I'm going to connect then this point at the bottom of this to that point there to make my to make my angle. I'll make this a little bit longer. Okay, so I've just created a 40 degree angle. Make sure that's as thick as I want it. Yep, that'll work. All right. So let's take the compass away. And looks like I need that angle to be a little bit longer. So let's see if I can do that. Let's just add a little bit to it. And we'll bring it down a little bit as well. Actually, I'm going to move this one over. Let's see, just a little bit. All right. So I still think I have my, my good angle there. Now, it's an isosceles triangle, and that 140-degree angle right, is in here. So I need to measure off a side length on the top and the bottom that are the same. That's going to be my two equal sides of the isosceles triangle. Then I can just connect them. So I'm going to take my ruler here and, I don't know, what do you think? I can make it any length I want. I'll make sure I line up that the beginning of the ruler at the, the right place here. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's say um, there's no numbers on this roll, but we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to put a mark there. And then, oops, make that go away. I'm going to measure out 8 here as well. Okay. Let's see. So, uh, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, it looks like it's about right there. That's not too bad. All right. So now, I'm going to move that out of the way. I have these two points that mark off a similar distance. 
So now I can just connect those two to make my isosceles triangle. So I'll just draw a line starting there and connect that one. And I have it. So, just to be clear, I measured off this angle and measured 8 centimeters here, 8 centimeters here, and then connected those two lines. So I have an isosceles triangle with one angle of 40. Now, of course, these will be 70 and 70, right, to make the whole thing add up to uh, 180. All right. So, uh, moving on. All right, big scary diagram, but it's really not that scary. So, again, before I start looking for specific angles, I'm going to just try to find as many different angles as I can with the information that's given. So, follow along. So, first I have vertical angles. So I know what B is right off the bat. That's 35. And then I know that A and B are supplementary. So 35 and angle A have to add up to 180. So I know that's going to be 145. All right. OK, what else can I figure out here? Um, I can figure out angle C because we have three angles here that are supplementary together. That line is the, the outside of three angles. So I have a 60 and a 90. Let's write that in here. And then my angle C is going to have to be enough to bring this up to 180. So 90 and 60 is 150. So these two together are 150. That makes C have to be 30. So again, note that 30 and 90 and 60 all add up to 180. All right. So now, take a look at this. I have this triangle. And I have two of the angles in the triangle, which means I can get the third because all three have to add up to 180. So 30 plus 35 is 65. And 65 plus what is 180? I'm going to write that in red. Uh, let's see. must be 115, I think. Does that work out? 115 plus 135 is 150. 150 plus 30 is 180. All right. And now that I have D, I can move on to E because these are supplementary as well. Um, so that's going to make E be 65. All right. And now I have two angles of this triangle. OK. So I have a 90 and a 65. This angle has to give me 180 when I add it to these two. Or I can also think of these two having to add up to 90. Either way works. So this is going to be uh, 25. And let's verify that 25 plus 65 is 90. 90 plus 90 is 180. So I think we've hit everything we need to hit here. Let's, let's find out. So we've got angle A is 145 degrees. Angle B is 35 degrees. Angle C was 30 degrees. Angle D was 115 degrees. Angle E was 65 degrees. And angle F was 25 degrees. And I'm going to say it again. Your job is to connect known angles with unknown angles using our relationships. So we used vertical angles here. We used supplementary angles to figure these out and these out. We used the fact that interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 to figure out some of these and some of these. And we also did supplementary here. So you're using relationships 
to connect known angles with unknown angles. All right, we're in the home stretch here. I think one more page. All right, so on this page, we are determining if these triangles um, are unique. That means with the information given about each triangle, is this the only triangle that you could draw? And we had four conditions that if we're given those types of information, we know that the triangle is unique. So we know that if we're given three sides, it's unique. We know that if we're given two sides and the angle between them, that it's unique. We know that if we have two angles and the side between it, that the triangle is unique. And we know if that we're given two angles and a different side, that that's also unique. So if we have these three pieces, these three pieces of information, we can only draw one triangle from that information. All right, so let's take a look at what we have here. Um, in this, we don't have any side information. Notice that. We only have the angles. And I can find this angle, right? Because we have 90 and 55, so this angle has to be um, 35, so that they all add up. But all we have in this picture is angle information. We don't have anything about side. And notice that all of our situations that we can draw a unique triangle all have at least one side given. So this is angle, angle, angle. I could draw a bigger version of this with the same angles. So this is not unique. So I'm going to write that down here. Okay, Not unique. All right, let's take a look at the middle one. So here we have an isosceles triangle. This is the same one we were working with earlier. We have an angle, and we have two side pieces of information given to me, and that does match one of our conditions. So that means this is unique. I can't draw another triangle. Once I put these side lengths in, that kind of locks in the triangle. I can't make it any bigger, I can't make it any longer, um, the angle stays the same, so this side angle side tells us, because we have side angle side, that tells us that this is unique. So I'm going to write unique because of side angle side. Alright, let's take a look at this last one. Um, we have another another isosceles triangle, we know these two sides are equal because of these marks and because these angles are the same. However, we still don't know the lengths of these sides. We know they're equal, but we don't know what the numbers are. So again, I can make a bigger version of this with these same angles and having equal sides, but they would be a different triangle. So once again, we don't have any side length information. We only have angle information so this is similar to the first one. It is also not unique. Because I can draw a, uh, a bigger triangle with these same angles. Again, no side information given. All right, I think that's it. Um, you can come see me and soar at lunch if you have any questions on these, and I hope that you found this helpful.